co-founder of Jay Rieger and Company. I'm here in our barrel dining room in the Rick House at the Jay Rieger and Company Distillery. We're going to taste through four of our whiskeys today. Let's dive right in. All right, so we're going to taste through four unique whiskeys from Jay Rieger and Company today. The first two, we're going to go with straight bourbon and straight rye, and these are barrel samples taken directly out of the casks that have been aging here for right now about four and a half years old. These two whiskeys have not been released yet. We haven't bottled them yet, but we're starting to get closer uh, to a point where we're ready to do that. So it's really exciting to taste through these right now and, and start to get an idea of what they're going to taste like. Um, third, we're gonna do the Kansas City whiskey. And that's our signature whiskey that we launched back in 2014. It's a blend of straight bourbon, straight rye, light corn whiskey, and then just a little hint of 15 year Oloroso, Oloroso sherry. That's our signature whiskey that we will continue uh, to have available for many years to come. And then finally, we're gonna uh, do a little sample of one of our private stock bottlings. And this is an exclusive uh, bottling where we've taken a straight bourbon and finished it in uh, Boulevard Bourbon Barrel Quad casks for about nine months. All right, so we're gonna start off with our straight bourbon. We literally just pulled this small sample out of a barrel just a couple of days ago. Um, we did cut it down to 100 proof. Came out of the barrel at, at around 133, so really, really strong. But we've uh, diluted it down to 100 proof for these purposes, because honestly, it's a little bit better uh, to taste it around that level, so you don't get too overwhelmed by, uh, by the alcohol. Um, so you're gonna start with your, your tasting glass. And one of the, the things that I always get asked is you know, the formality of tasting and the rules. And I really don't like to abide by a lot of those formalities and rules. I like to kind of uh, just have fun with it, be relaxed with it. Um, the glass can make a difference. Uh, this is a pretty official uh, whiskey tasting glass. It's intended to funnel the aroma uh, to the right point so you can get a nice, a nice good whiff of it. Uh, but if you've got like a regular rocks glass, that's gonna work just as well also. Um, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna look at it. You want to look at the color, um, analyze that, kind of swirl it around the glass a little bit. And then as you're smelling it, um, you want to draw the aroma in, but you don't want to overwhelm your senses. And so you want to kind of keep your mouth open just a little bit and, ex and bring in some oxygen at the same time that kind of blends with that uh, aroma from the whiskey. And it's going to give you a, a nice full uh, sense of what it really smells like. This being bourbon, you know, right off the bat, you're gonna get uh, notes of like cornbread, and I always get a little bit of like maple syrup, and then that kind of like blends into some like fruit characteristics. So bourbon, even though it's straight bourbon, it's big and bold and robust. There's an inherent sweetness uh, to bourbon that I think is really, uh, really unique and really special and, and adds a lot of complexity and elegance to the whiskey. Uh, but you get a lot of those sweeter aromas right on the nose. When tasting it, um, don't drink the whole thing. Um, take a small sip, but let it cover your whole palate. You know, make sure you coat all sides of your tongue, front, back, both sides, the roof of your mouth. That's gonna give you a, a much better picture of, of what you're tasting. Um, second, you wanna take a couple of sips, but you don't wanna drink too much before you start really thinking about analyzing the flavors. That first one, that first sip is gonna kind of calibrate your palate, so to speak. And then on the second one, you're gonna really get a sense of, of what you're tasting. Wow. So with this one, um, again, this is about a four and a half year old straight bourbon. Um, you get a lot of that kind of uh, woody char that you're getting from the from the new chart of barrels that, it, that has been resting in for four and a half years. Um, that's gonna add another level of sweetness to it. Um, I get nuttiness out of it too. I get like, uh, almost like a, a like a caramel corn, like a popcorn kind of uh, flavor profile that's really, really uh, delicious. Um, you're gonna get some of those uh, dark fruits, like kind of a reddish black fruit, um, some berries, 
things like that. And you're gonna get a lot of uh, vanilla that's gonna come from the oak um, and hints of like marzipan and, and things like that. It's really, really wonderful. And uh, I mean, I would happily drink this right now, even at four and a half years old. I also think that bourbon, typically hits its sweet spot around the five to six year mark. So we're getting really, really close on this one, um, but it's really tasty uh, right out of the barrel right now. And it's, uh, it's really exciting to see uh, straight bourbon that we're able to, to make uh, at this quality right here in Kansas City. All right, so we're gonna move over to our straight rye. And this was made right around the same time as our straight bourbon, so it's about four and a half years old as well. Now, one thing I want you to do is, as you're tasting through these, don't uh, always save some back to compare later, because you might taste something down the line that reminds you of, the, of one earlier, you wanna compare and contrast a little bit. And what I think is really fascinating about looking at these, so the straight bourbon and the straight rye, they have distinctly different colors even though they're about the same age and they've been aged in the exact same type of barrel, it kind of goes to show that every barrel has its own personality, so to speak. And depending on where it's at in the Rick House and the microclimate that exists in that location, you might get more extraction out of the barrel in one place versus another. So it's really interesting to look at these two next to each other right now because they definitely look uh, different. And I know that they're, it, they're gonna taste a lot and smell a lot different as well. So let's start by uh, checking out the aroma on the rye. And right off the bat on, on this, you're gonna notice a distinct difference in that you get instead of that like cornbread, maple-y richness that you get in the bourbon, uh, you're gonna get a floral kind of quality on, on the rye. It's gonna have this like peppery, spicy, flowery kind of uh, quality going on that's really, really neat. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful aroma. And again, you're gonna get some of that uh, oak on the aroma as well. Let's, let's taste it. Mm. Mm. Rule of two, let's do the second one. Mm. Wow, wow. Um, so this is, this is very, very exciting to, to taste. Um, real spicy, like loaded with pepper, but the spice is kind of leaning towards um, a sweeter spice, which is really interesting. Like I'm getting cinnamon on it, like nutmeg and cinnamon and baking spices, like a lot of baking spices on it, which is really cool because usually you don't get that flavor profile until they're much older. You might expect to get nutmeg and allspice in a rye that's like eight years old, but not one that's four and a half. So that's really, really cool um, and exciting to taste. And uh, you know, we taste these, we revisit these every now and then. The last time I, I tasted uh, these two particular barrels was uh, probably about six months ago and they've evolved a lot. It just go, it goes to show how quickly they evolve in the barrel and change uh, over time. But this one, if I had been blinded on this, somebody put this in front of me and said, what is it? Uh, there's no question I'm gonna say that it's straight rye whiskey. It's dry, it's, it's aggressive, it's peppery, it's, it's floral. But that, that interesting baking spice note, um, I would have guessed it, it would be quite a bit older than what I'm tasting um, right now. But wow, uh, that's really, really, really delicious. So really exciting to taste that one right out of the barrel right now. Let's taste our Kansas City whiskey. And this is really our flagship. This is this is so far what we're, we're known for. Uh, if you're tasting uh, the straight bourbon and the straight rye along with me, you're really, really lucky right now. Not a lot of people have had the opportunity to do this, but Kansas City whiskey is what we're known for and it's what we've really built our brand on. Um, what's really beautiful about this whiskey is that it is a proprietary blend and there's a real, art form and a real magic to blending that often gets uh, kind of ignored or, or glossed over. But being able to take straight bourbon and its characteristics and straight rye 
And then we've added a third whiskey to this one called light corn whiskey. And light corn whiskey is a very specific kind of whiskey as well. All three of these whiskeys, they, they have different attributes and characteristics, and they're gonna uh, work really, really well together as long as you get that blend right. Finally, we've added a uh, 15 year Oloroso sherry and just 2%. It's a tiny, tiny amount that we've added uh, to this. And it's also a style of American whiskey blend that was really common back in the 1800s, back when Jay Rieger and Company was first founded. It's been lost since Prohibition, but we've proudly brought this style back and it's been classified as Kansas City whiskey. And it really, uh, what it really showcases is the, the sherry itself, even though it's such a, a small amount. Um, so let's, uh, let's start. Let's start tasting. So first on the aroma, um, what's amazing about this, and I still, you know, after all these years of doing this, I still love it. Um, the aroma on the Kansas City whiskey, the first thing I get is that sherry. Sherry is such a special, unique product in and of itself. And at 2%, it really makes Kansas City whiskey what it is, and it really shines through. And if you're smelling it, what you're gonna get is like, almond, like almond, a little bit of black walnut, um, this kind of an assaulted, like drier almond or, or black walnut, not like a sweeter roasted type. Um, it's fascinating and it's a very distinctive aroma that you get from the, from the sherry itself and it shines uh, in this whiskey. All right, so let's take a sip. Can get to do too. And here's what's really beautiful about this: those four ingredients, they work so well together and in harmony, and the flavors are layered beautifully in this whiskey. So right up front, right in the very beginning, first thing you're gonna get is the bourbon and the light corn whiskey. You get that cornbread, like what you get in bourbon. You get uh, a little bit of like popcorn and, and, and butter and flavors like that. And they're both gonna come, those flavors come from both the light corn whiskey and the bourbon. So the real difference between light corn whiskey and bourbon, they're almost the same, except that when distilling bourbon, in order to retain more of the flavor, you cannot distill it to over 160 proof. It has to stay below 160 proof. Like corn whiskey can break that 160 proof threshold and it actually gets distilled up to 165. The second difference is that instead of being aged in brand new charred uh, oak barrels, it's aged in second use barrels. So you get less of that big, heavy, sweet charred flavor and just a softer uh, flavor that's more reminiscent of the, the grain in the whiskey, which is 90 99% corn and only 1% malted barley. Uh, so it just softens a little bit. I always refer to like corn whiskeys, but like think of bourbon, but a little bit lighter, a little bit softer, and they just work beautifully together. Um, so that's what you're gonna get right up front. Uh, mid palate is where the sherry comes back in, and now you're getting that like richness, sweetness, um, that kind of candied dried fruit, like raisins and uh, raspberries and things like that. That's gonna be right in the middle of the palate. And also you're gonna get some like butterscotch and uh, maple and, and uh, sweeter flavor profiles. And then the rye comes in on the very, very back. It finishes with that spiciness and with that, that dryness so that you're not left uh, with it being cloying or anything like that. It's, it's really amazing to me how the flavors in this whiskey cascade from, so clearly from one uh, of the whiskeys to the next and uh, wonderfully blending in that sherry. Um, another really fascinating part about this whiskey, if you're taking a look at it, um, it's so complex and there are so many different things going on, but the age of the whiskeys is really important. So the youngest part of this blend is over five years old. That's, and that's a really small part, that's the rye. The rye is over five years old and that's a really small uh, part of the blend. Um, then you've got seven, seven plus year bourbon. Um, the light corn whiskey is 10 to 11 years old and that's a significant part of the blend. And then you've got the 15 year Oloroso. But if you take that with the range being from five years up to uh, 15, and hold it up against that rye that we just tasted that's only four and a half. It's really, really cool to see how much darker that straight rye is. It's got this like kind of garnet amber hue, whereas the uh, Kansas City whiskey is more like a honey, like a golden honey color. 
And usually color uh, it says a lot about the age in whiskey. Typically, if you get something darker like that, um, as long as it hasn't had anything added to it, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be a little bit darker if it's got more age on it. But this one is lighter. Reason being, remember that light corn whiskey is not aged in charred oak, it's aged in second use oak, which it doesn't give it as much color. And so that's, that's why you've got uh, less color on this, even though it has more age. I had to do another one just because I love it so much. Um, fantastic whiskey. Um, can't wait to start using these, the bourbon and the rye, um, and incorporating them into that blend. That's gonna be really, really cool as well. So that's our Kansas City whiskey. All right, so finally, we're gonna taste one of our private stock offerings. And private stock is a limited edition whiskey that we bottle, typically like a single barrel uh, purchase for many of our customers, uh, retail stores, restaurants, bars, things like that. If they want something that's really unique and special to them, we'll do a customized, essentially, uh, barrel finish of our bourbon straight for them. Now, the bourbon that we put in this is uh, the same bourbon that goes into our Kansas City whiskey. So you're looking at about seven and a half years, roughly, prior to us finishing it in barrel. Now on this particular one, uh, this particular private stock, this one has been finished in Boulevard Brewery Bourbon Barrel Quad. Um, and if you've done any experience with barrel finishes, it's really remarkable how much impact that barrel finish has on the final product. So you can take your bourbon uh, that's been aged for seven and a half years in your new charred American oak barrel, and then you put it into a beer cask like that, or maybe you put it into a wine cask or a sherry cask or something like that, it's gonna completely change the profile and, and change the, the characteristics of the whiskey. And it can have a really, really profound impact. So uh, this one is our private stock uh, with uh, Boulevard Brewing Company, Bourbon Barrel Quad. Let's check it out. So first off, you got your color, um, pretty dark, uh, kind of bordering on uh, like garnet, um, starting to get some hints of like red, uh, dark orange, red, uh, things like that. Um, let's check out the nose. So the first thing I noticed on this is it's malty. And the bourbon that we've used is like 99% corn, 1% malt. Um, and I'm just getting a lot of malt on this, but that's gonna come from the, from the beer. That bourbon barrel quad is a rich, dark, intense beer. Um, and it's also interesting that the bourbon barrel quad was a beer that was aged in bourbon casks that after empty, now we've taken that cask you know, that had whiskey in it and then beer, and now we put bourbon back in it. And so I think it's kind of amplifying some of those malty aromas that you would get in the beer. I think it, a lot of it seeps into the wood and it really imparts itself on the, on the whiskey. Another thing I'm picking up on this that I didn't get on just the straight bourbon um, is coconut. And I have kind of a, maybe a, a hypersensitivity to coconut. Um, I, I always smell that and it's really common with American oak. Um, that's something that you see a lot with American oak finished uh, or aged whiskeys or finished whiskeys. And it's, uh, to me, it's showcasing itself a little bit more prominently on this one in particular. So let's give it a, give it a taste. fantastic. It's um, at 100 proof. Um, there's hardly any heat at all. The, the alcohol content to me has been completely masked by this almost confectionery kind of quality. Um, you know, the coconut that I mentioned earlier is still in there. It's more of like a, but now it's coming across like a toasted coconut, like a cooked coconut that could be used in like a dessert, like a coconut cream pie or something like that. But I'm getting these confectionery notes like um, root beer float and uh, sweeter uh, desserts and, and, and those types of flavors. And they're wonderful and delicious. Um, I want to pair it with chocolate or something like that. Uh, it's 
It's really, really delicious. It's really rich. And I'm not at all surprised that I'm getting those uh, toasted chocolatey dessert flavors considering uh, that this has been finished for about nine months in the bourbon barrel quad barrel. Because bourbon barrel quad, it's uh, high alcohol, rich beer um, that I would almost consider like a dessert uh, quality beer. This is, this is delicious. The interesting thing about this, we've we've had a lot of opportunity to experiment with these private sock bottlings. We've done at least a couple of dozen of them. Most of them tend to be wine cask finishes. So we've done Pinot Noir uh, casks. We've used Cabernet Sauvignon, Zinfandel. We've even got Chiani casks uh, from Italy, and the. The flavors and characteristics that are imparted from those barrels tend to be pretty muted and uh, pretty just nuanced, subtle. This one's not subtle. The beer cask finishes that we've done, it, they really like, they stick up, the, the beer sticks up for itself against the bourbon. It's like, it's not backing down. And the flavor profile really comes across and it, it's really, really delicious. It's a great pairing. Um, and I'm also fascinated by uh, the life cycle of the barrel. The fact that it started out as a, a straight bourbon cask, then spent some time at Boulevard aging beer, now it's back aging whiskey again. Um, it's just kind of a, a neat thing to think about. But um, if you can pick this up somewhere, keep your eyes open for it and keep your eyes open for some other private stock bottlings that we've done for other clients as well. Yeah, damn, that's delicious. Yeah, um, yep. <laughs>